Anchors up, sell the full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Jared? I'm not going to complain. Actually, hold on. Let me do this. Let me do this before I turn the noise gate back on. Let's see. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Austin, right, right from the start here. Uh, <laughs> trying to trying to be funny right before we before we hit the record button in our 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 bot uh warns him for spamming <laughs> i don't even want to i don't even want to know what he was doing i said three two one <laughs> been doing that for years yes i i don't know maybe it was just too fast maybe you were too fast for it kyle speaking uh, of, speaking of speaking of doing it for years We've been talking for years, Jared. Different ways to fix college football. Yeah. Now that college football has changed, uh, yeah, obviously yeah. from the playoff um, playoff side with it, a, um, number of teams getting in, as well as what we just saw this week as well of what the NCAA was doing with, with the transfer portal, um, I think is now – better time than ever to revisit our ideas to fix college football and kind of like start start that over again with with the all changes and what what well, needs it was to the, still happen to fix it it was a sign it was signing period right that they're talking about moving the early signing period <coughs> and adding a third early signing period when like that's the opposite of what we should be doing we should just be getting rid of the early signing period move everything but anyway we'll we'll get there we'll get there don't worry about that we'll get there but yeah we're fixing college yeah, football change, yeah, changing signing yeah uh, i was just pulling up here yeah changing it um which falls on december 4th um yeah they're looking to do it on december 4th which is a lot early, which is like a couple weeks earlier from what I right. remember. So Kyle, this is an ask Sloopcast episode. We, we know we have a long history. Let me, let me address this. We have a long history, as you pointed out, doing ask, uh, doing episodes about fixing college football. Uh, we once, uh, laid out a method for, uh, doing college football, uh, promotion and relegation, much like the, uh, English football league does. That would never happen. That was never meant to be a realistic thing that would actually happen. It would be great. It would never happen. Um, last year, I proposed doing less commercial breaks, but more advertising on the uniforms and on the field to supplement that income. That was another suggestion. Um, I have been advocating for years that the Big Ten and the SEC break away from the NCAA and govern them down, govern them themselves, which I think is very much on the table. Um, we've been advocating for a lot of different things for a while now. And so this is an ask Sloopcast question or an ask Sloopcast show episode. Um, episode. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Now, normally ask Sloopcast is, uh, the, the folks in the Patreon, or excuse me, the, first, the folks in the Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com, always be plugging, um, asking us questions and us answering the questions. Every once in a while, we, we like to flip that around and uh, ask the Sloopcast a question, ask the Sloopcats a question and say, uh, hey, how would you guys blah, 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 blah. Now, Kyle and I each brought a, a potential solution as well. So we have, I have a solution. Kyle has a solution. Ideas to fix college football. And we have a few from the Sloop Cats. Kyle, where would you like to start? Oh, good question. Good question. There's, there's a lot of, a lot of different Ask ways Kyle, to Ask Kyle, where would you like to start? This. Well, let's, let, let's, let's go with our, let's go with our Sloop Cats. Let's. Okay. Let's start with the Sloop Cats and see see what they see what they have to say here. So we'll 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 start from the top here, <clears throat> going back way back. So we we've had this ask this question a while ago. We, we can't. Some... We've delayed this episode twice <laughs> because of just yeah, news popping old, up. Yeah, we have some order questions or yeah order answers here. So 
we'll start with Z spikes here. Uh, Z spikes, part of our sleep cats here. Um, he says here, mm, so we acknowledge the bowl games are meaningless. I think we have to figure a way to fix that. By the end of the season, our appetite for shitty, meaningless games is pretty poor. To yeah. fix this, the non-playoff bowl games would be announced in the same manner they are now, but instead of them playing in December, they become the team's week zero or week one schedule games in the following season. A loss in this game isn't as detrimental with the new 12-team playoff format. Agreed. The bowl game venue sponsors get to promote the bowl games throughout the wasteland, and we're all excited for the bowl games, uh, for all of the bowl game football. The teams take the game seriously because it counts towards their record. You can still go you can still go the additional NIL money route too with the long lead time. The ratings would be significantly better as well as attendance at the games. Yeah. And uh, Suncard responded to that saying, yeah, uh, he's I've said that a few times, which he has. Suncard has uh, often mentioned the idea of moving the bowl games to September. Um, and he also then says that all the postseason games should be tournaments. Um, and then he he, do, he does go on to explain that a little bit further, but we'll treat that as a separate idea. <laughs> I think this is a home run. Uh, it, it does. It helps to preserve the bowl games, which if that's a thing you care about, which I, I, I don't let the bowl games die as far as I'm concerned. But if you're concerned about preserving the bowl games. Having a actual. Regular season game that counts. Played in September when we're all ready for some football. I think this makes a lot of sense. The, the one issue I have with it um, is that all of the bowl games are probably in, in Spikes does point out you can put some of them in week zero and some of them in week one. You know, over that same stretch, you do also have Labor Day, which college football likes to play games on Labor Day anyway, not Labor Day. Um, yeah, it's Labor Day, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Everyone says yes. Um, yeah. So it's, a. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a, I think this is a, a good compromise. If you care about preserving the bowl games and if you care about, if you care about preserving the bowl games is basically it. I I don't care about preserving the bowl games, but if you are, I would be down for this as a solution for preserving the bowl games. My only issue is that you're introducing a lot of neutral field games, which I'm not. I the college stadium atmospheres in our uh, arguably the best thing about college football, inarguably the best thing it has over the NFL. If you're comparing the NFL game to the college football game, the best thing that the college football game has over the NFL is stadium atmosphere. I'm just saying I, I'm not a fan of neutral site games. That, that would be my one critique here. But again, if this is a compromise of saving the bowl games, it's, it's a, it's a good compromise. What are your thoughts, Kyle? I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat I'm kind of in the same boat with you, Jared and Wade. Like, I don't really care too much about the um, about the bowl games, honestly, because like right now, it's it's like over over half of the teams, over half of the Division One FBS um, teams go to, gets to a bowl game, like. Really, should we be rewarding six and six teams? And heck, even teams are below 500 are making it in too. Like, should we be rewarding all of those, all of those teams who had a subpar, not even a subpar, and a 50, a 500 season and reward them with a, with a bowl game? I don't think so, honestly. Because you look, you look at college basketball, college basketball, um, 
very very little teams very little teams make it to the um make it to the NCAA tournament so there's uh, too damn many what are you 352 teams uh divided by 66 so 5% 5 percent of division 1 men's basketball um teams make it to the NCAA so if we do 12 so if we do 12 teams for the the new playoff in football, 134, 12 teams, 11%, doubling doubling of what of what uh, the basketball is. So in my opinion, if you don't make the if you don't make the tournament, it, you you get you got you get a longer off season. Maybe 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 there's a and maybe there's a an NIT variant. Maybe there's an NIT variant of that. I, Which, I, I, can, I can go along with that. Sun card goes on to say postseason should be tournaments. 12 team playoff determines a championship game. 13 to 28 can compete in a 16 team playoff. The insert your sponsor tournament championship. Same with 29 to 44. Uh, three tournaments played with relatively uh, equated talent the bowl games can become uh, various stopping points along the way so the outback bowl is like a tournament uh to final four east game i'm not against again if you're trying to preserve some sort of bowl relevancy i'm also not against that idea you know, on in honesty too, like how many how many of these traditional bowl games are there left? They they keep changing every year. Like we we always have that fun episode every year where we go through all the bowl games and we're like, is this new? I don't remember this it's, from last year. Well, it's just because the, the sponsor <laughs> changed, and yeah. I, I I'm I'm fine with. I'm actually I actually like Suncard's first part there about having like teams thirteen to twenty eight. Okay. Fine, you can have a like a NIT equivalent uh, tournament. Sure. The question but is, how many people would watch it? I think more people than who watch a six and six team go against a seven and five team in a in some bowl game down in Florida or Texas. The yeah, I I think that I think there would be. I think there will be more eyes watching this just because it is a it would be a tournament format because the games actually do matter. So I, w I would say yes. I th I think the games would get um would get more eyes on them. I mean, I'm willing to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kyle. I like that. I like that. Let me uh the the one we brought up is in the thumbnail. We've already made the thumbnail for this episode. I want I want to pay off the other thumbnail item. It just just to not yeah. You know, it feel it, it feels feels like the good YouTuber honest thing to do to pay off the thumbnail somewhat early. So I, I think I'm going to sure. do the next one. Sure. Um, sure. Go ahead. I'm 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 gonna read a quote here. Uh, it's actually a series of a few quotes. Um. The thing I would change about college football is to let the talent share in the ever increasing revenues End quote, new quote, we're we're all robbing the same train and the ones that are in the position to do the heavy lifting, the ones that risk life and limb out there on a football field are the players and not just not just the football players, student athletes, new quote. For a long time, people say that unionizing would be bad if people aren't going to do it, if they're not going to do it out of their own will and do what's right. I mean, that's probably the next step. How I would fix college football is by having the players unionize. The players should unionize. Every other major sport that we watch the players are unionized so there would be a cfb pa yes essentially now let me 
you, you know, I actually honestly believe this because the those quotes all come from one Winston, Jim Harbaugh. I don't, I don't, I don't find myself trying to blaze up Jim Harbaugh or agree with Jim Harbaugh too often. It's not, it's not a thing I, I like to do, but he's right. And, and one of the, here, and here's an instance in which I'd like to prove. I mean, there are many many instances in which this would be beneficial for players. Let me lay this out. Um, this week, EA Sports uh, was sent, was officially sent out. Ah, uh, Spikes says, wow, Spikes, you're, you're on top of things. Uh, the CFBPA is going to fuck up NCAA 25, isn't it? Huh, interesting you should say that. This week, uh, the uh, EA Sports sent out a form to all college football players, allowing them to opt in or not to having their name, image, and likeness in the new NCAA 25 game. Their reward, their fee for that, will be $600 and a free copy of the game. And I saw plenty of people be like, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. It's not fair. It is not fair. It is not fair compensation. One, the players had no say in this. This is simply EA saying, take it or leave it. Especially the way they will market it too. Uh-huh. Now there, you know, there, there'll probably be additional opportunities for higher profile players. Like, you know, who's going to be on the cover? Maybe a bunch of different people are on the cover and I've, you know, I've heard that they're going to make a very generic cover that this year, maybe, 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 maybe following years, depending on how, how things roll out. Maybe, I think, I think I see where, where players going can with promote this, Jared, the game. But. Uh, through, you know, yeah. may, maybe maybe EA puts on a tournament and they pay the players to participate in the tournament. Like, or or, or remember, remember what they did a couple of years where they had uh, specific regional covers? covers? Yep. Yep. So regional marketing, regional covers. There might be additional player for higher or additional pay for higher profile players. That's on the table. They've hinted at that. But six hundred dollars and a copy of the game is crap compensation because the game literally, and we know this for a fact because we haven't, they haven't made one for 11 years. The game cannot exist without the players. It simply cannot exist without the players. Kyle, I did some math. You got 85 players. You got approximately a, your math then. No, I did it. I did it before we recorded. I, I, I'm good at math as long as I'm not being recorded while I'm doing it. Then I get all fluttery and I can't right. do it. Right. Also, right. I use the also I use the calculator. <laughs> 85 players times 130 teams is let's just say 11,000 players. It's 11,050 players. $600 times 11,050 players equals a total of six million dollars six let's just say six point six million dollars six point six million dollars for comparison for comparison the NFLPA gets about a hundred and twenty million dollars for the name image likeness of NFL players. Six point six million dollars a year point one hundred and twenty million. A hundred and twenty million a year the NFL PA gets for the name image likeness of the NFL players. Versus six point six million for college football players. Mm -hmm. Why? 
because the NFLPA can collectively bargain for all of the players as opposed to each player getting a take it or leave it deal. This is the power of collective bargaining. This is the power when both sides can say, take it or leave it instead of just one side saying, take it or leave it. Some additional math. EA sports. The last time they released a copy of NCAA, which was NCAA 2014, they sold 1.2 million copies at about $60 a piece. That is $72 million. And we all know if you've played an EA sports game lately, you know, the price of the game isn't where there's microtransactions. And I guarantee you there's going to be microtransactions in the new NCAA game. So it's going to be more than that. And it's also the first NCAA game that's been released in 11 years. They're probably going to sell more than 1.2 million copies if we're being honest. Let's say 1.2 million. And also, like, not, you know, games go on sale. It's, it's you know, so 72 million might be slightly inflated because not everyone pays full price for it. But $72 million. Uh, this, this equates to approximately 9% percent of the overall revenue of the game players are only getting about nine percent of the revenue of the entire game that's crap so no six hundred dollars and a copy of the game is not fair it's not fair it's what happens when only one side can say take it or leave it and this is only one example this is only one example of how the players not being organized constantly screws them over. And I guarantee you one of the reasons, and by, by the way, you know, when one time there's been one time in which college football players have organized and no, I'm not talking about that time. The Northwestern players tried to unionize. There was another mm -hmm. instance in which players across college football organized. Do you remember when that was? So the year 20, remember. the year 2020, when Justin Fields and a bunch of players mm -hmm. from yes. some other teams all got together and started talking with a collective voice about playing football that year. And guess what ended up happening? They ended up playing college football that year. Yep. The NCAA and all of the college institutions. They saw players start to organize, and I guarantee you, behind closed doors, there, there were conversations of like, if we don't do something about this, this organization is going to turn into unionization. I think all the players, and I would do this by conference, not by the NCAA, because we don't want you know, we, we don't want to be playing by Mac rules, right? I think every single player in the Big Ten should join a Big Ten players union. I think every single player in the SEC should join an SEC players union. We can just keep trickling on that down. And by the way, once we uh, once the final hammer drops and we have a big two, which is coming. It's coming. Player unionization is going to have to happen. And with that, Kyle, because we also like to get paid, we're going to take this to a quick commercial break. If you want to avoid these commercial breaks, uh, please go ahead and uh, join our Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. You get ad free version of the show. And it's like it's only the minimum version of our of our Patreon is three dollars a month uh, or you can pay for 12 months up front. And uh, it's only, I think, like 32 something. So we're going to go ahead and kick that over to commercial. Okay, Kyle, where do, where do you want to go next? 
I, we, we we have um, spikes let's, and let's sun back, card let's solution. Go back to the, uh, we have yeah, my let's solution. Let's go back to the sloop cats here. Okay. Um, we'll just we'll just do a funny one to start us off after the ad break here. Um, I hear one from Buckeye Zach here, just because I like this one. It's not going to yeah. fix it, but I think I think I think it uh, will make uh, college football that much more fun to watch throughout the year, not just certain parts of the year. Sure, sure. Uh, college football would be better if weeknight action was the entire season, not just November. Wouldn't it be fair. It, start, it starts at, it starts like mid October, mid end of October. But yes, I agree. Hundred percent. All, all. I I would welcome it more in September than I would. Again, going back to what Suncard and Spikes were saying, when are we most thirsty? When are we most hungry for college football? Yeah, it's it's that September, especially like a lot of those a lot of those first weeks. There's not really a ton of like great games compared to October and November. That that's when we're craving it more because we want to yeah. we want more games because of more often than not that lackluster of games that we see in the early weeks of the college football season. So I welcome Malkshin during weeknights in September. hundred yeah, percent. Some Wednesday, Tuesday night Malkshin games. The, 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 the problem with this is that the Mac teams play on Saturdays during September because that's when they're collecting paychecks for getting yes. walloped <laughs> by the big schools. Um, that, is that, true. that, 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 that's why this won't happen. Um, again, maybe if we get to a point in which there is a big two and maybe. Well, it, it, here, here's, here's maybe here's the teams connection. aren't lining up here, to play Mac action anymore. Just thought of an idea. If you're wanting to play a Mac team, like if you're scheduled to play to a Mac team, you uh -huh. have to play them during the weekday. No. So like a Thursday or Friday. No. Remember what I said before about how the uh, EA Sports gets to say take it or leave it because they have all the power and because the players aren't unionized, they have no collective power? Well, okay. Uh, in this scenario, Ohio State has all the power and they say, hey, Toledo, <laughs> 1.2 million to show up on Saturday, take it or leave it. Because if Toledo yeah. says no, Akron will say yes. If Akron says no, Ohio will say yes. It, or, or they'll go to like the Sun Belt or go somewhere else. Sure. Like that sounds nice, Kyle, but the, they, they have no negotiating power. Ohio State just moves on to the to UNLV or something. All right. Um, another question here, which is kind of the point that I've really wanted to focus on about fixing college football because – Previous episodes that we've did a number of years ago, um, fixing college football, it's going to need to come. It's going to come down to two conferences, writings on the wall. It's going to happen sooner or later here. But I think the big thing that's really hurting the players here, that's really hurting them, it's it's this whole signing period and and the transfer portal period too, like they happen too close together they happen like right away right out as soon as the season ends here and yeah and and they both happen at the same time in december and it's just it's just a big disaster here but remember remember a number of years ago um there was a lot of people talking about it for for a few years here where a lot of underclassmen uh left to give the NFL a shot and how many of those players didn't even get drafted or even get a shot to a, a practice uh, squad at all. And they just couldn't go back to college football because they declared. And once you declared at that time, it's like, all right, you are, you can't come back to college football. Now those rules have, um, have changed for the better for the players. And I, I'm all, all for that. Because NIL is a thing, players can now hire agents. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you look at you look at the transfer portal from 2024 here. Over 2,200 players, almost 2,300 players, entered the draft or the draft enter entered the transfer portal. 43 percent of those, 43 percent, so about 900, 
almost a thousand of those players still do not have a home. Yeah. They they still are in the transfer portal. They still don't have a home. And and I think a lot of that it has to come down to when early signing period happens and also when the transfer portal happens too. So I think we, to fix college football, part of it is fixing when the transfer portal happens and when signing uh, the signing periods happen. Now, I'm all for I th- I believe that the transfer portal should happen sure like maybe the week after the conference the conference games, the conference championship games. The week after that, okay, transfer portal opens up, players can go and transfer. I think it should be a all week right, after cool. the title game. That way all the players are entering the portal at the same time. Well, I mean, there's there's those other caveats too, depending on when your team plays. Yeah, but I'm and saying everyone should. Okay. I'm saying um, everyone should I'm saying the portal should open for everyone after and and I and I believe that the signing period. I believe the signing period should be like for after the signing period after, for for recruits. Like the, if you move to recruits, for recruits, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, okay. for recruits, yes, for recruits. Those should happen after, like, give some a period of time after the transfer portal happened, and then and then the um, signing just, period happens. Just there. go back to traditional National Signing Day and get rid of the. So the the one thing here and. I hear you, Jared. I hear it. And I've and I've always thought that way too, because I always miss a a second Christmas. That for that that first Tuesday in February uh, of signing day and just seeing all the news uh and just the those old fax machines get dusted off and <laughs> and all that too. A lot a lot of fun, a lot of fun, a lot of fun that happens um during the, the signing day here. But a lot of players do take advantage of being able to enroll early in January to 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 get into the program to start. To start players their, could enroll their career and all that. Players could enroll early before they move National Signing Day. That's not that's that all that that happened before they moved National Signing Day. But that, does that also affect them with their with their scholarships though? Because they haven't technically signed, so they're not on scholarship. So how does that affect them with their, with their, um, they they would pay to the university then? I I don't know, man, but they figured it out. Yeah. They figured it out before they moved national signing day. Like kids enrolling in the spring happened before they moved national signing day or before they added the early signing day. It happened before that. It can happen after that. Okay. I mean, so if, so if they, so if they're, I don't know, do, I don't I, know I, I all think, the paperwork that made that happen, but it happened. Okay. So I, I think that, I think that the signing period for recruits should happen after, after na- um, not na- the national title game, then that, that happens. And then, and then the recruiting, and then the recruits get to sign their, um, sign their contract or not gets to sign a way of where they're wanting to play their education or play their football careers at then. <laughs> and, and also something about education. Yeah. Um, and something about education in there. Too. Because here's the yeah. thing, whether it be so. the transfer portal or with uh, early signing or net, just national signing day in general, if you're doing that in and, February, and, if you're doing that in February, most of the coaching carousel has slowed down by then. It hasn't fully stopped. So it is mostly, and like, yes, Yes. You can, if a coach leaves. You have three days. You have, but that has to be the head coach. What happens if your favorite position coach leaves? Are you allowed to enter the transfer portal? No. If your offensive coordinator leaves, no, it doesn't reopen the chat. That's only if the head coach leaves. But and it happens, second, and it happens everywhere that, where these kids will sign in December 
And when they're signing, they're often like because of a relationship they have with their position coach, with the person who directly recruited them, they sign in December coaching carousel happens. And then their, their favorite guy is gone. I mean, just look at Julian saying who has transferred to Ohio state. He didn't, he Alabama did not release him from his signed letter of intent. He transferred to Ohio state. Julian saying should still be in high school, but he's already used his one transfer portal maneuver. But I, I think that there, because there is, there is a second, um, or in my mind, how to fix college football is that you would have also a second uh, transfer period as well too, and that would be after after um, spring spring uh, camp as well. So like, and that and that does exist. Like, but yeah, yes. I, and I'll just say let like, just the first of May, the first two first Monday or Tuesday in May. That that's your second um, transfer portal period as well for for two weeks or a week however long they want to put that put your name put your name in the transfer portal and then teams can go on from there then i I think i think that's in my mind how it should work is one week after the conference championship game and then the and then and then after spring uh spring practice yeah i mean i agree with you but I, I think they should try to standardize when everyone goes in the portal. And the best way to do that is to not have, well, these guys have this deadline, but because these guys played in January, they have this deadline. And because these guys played in the national championship, they have this deadline. No, just a week after the national title game is when the transfer portal opens. Done. Done. And again, just get rid of early signing period for for recruits instead of adding a third one, which is what they're talking about doing. Yeah. All right. Um, last one here we have. We got one from Austin. We got one from Austin here, Jared. It's, it's a is a long one here. Uh, before we do that, here. before we do that one, Odin has a short one. Do you want to knock out a short one first? Yeah, yeah, there's Odin's here. Yeah, uh, FCS teams should all go to bowl games. All for it. You have 12 teams. Listen, you 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 yourself said in this episode, uh, six and six, five and six, five and seven, seven and six, seven and five, whatever. Team shouldn't be allowed to go to a bowl game. Okay, well, there's a million bowl games and we need to satiate that demand, apparently. Well. You get rid of those. That, that's how you solve that. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> FCS have their own tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure when that, like, finishes, but I feel like it would get in the way of their own tournament, which they rightfully take more seriously, I would assume, than a trip to the Liberty Bowl. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Let's get into Austin's here. Lots. Lot, lot, lots to lots to go in here. Because he, he 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 wrote he wrote a he wrote a very long response here. Okay. Um, is it ha- it's is it super duper long? It is super duper long, yes. Okay. Well then let's go ahead and do our our Let's go in segments. Okay, let's 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 tackle. All, listen, I I encourage everyone to write a manifesto if they wanted to. Spikes gave us a a manifesto of sorts. We got some tiny ones from some other people. I said do some tiny ones too, but yeah. But before we do that, let's let's do an ad break. Um, once again, we're gonna we're gonna cut the commercial. Once again, you can avoid these ad breaks by uh, listening on Patreon. Uh, you can either get your very own RSS feed on Patreon to put right into your uh, podcast app of choice, or you can listen directly on the Patreon app um, and you can enjoy an ad free listening experience over at over at uh, Patreon dot the as little three dollars a month or thirty to fifty a year or something like that. 
um, can get you ad free listening, uh, early access to episodes, premium access to the discord server, all sorts of cool benefits um, over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. All right, Kyle, let's, uh, let's tackle Austin's manifesto. All right, Ear, he says here, how to fix college football. Split it up to just the SEC and the Big Ten on its way. Yeah, that's, that's happening. Format, format two conferences of 24. That's happening. <laughs> I, th- I, think tw- I think 24 is that magic number. I, I think 26 is on the table. Uh, by the way, it was it, it, my suspicions, which I, I, I have long, again, go through our like power two episodes that we've done many of. I've I've I often put um, Cal and Stanford in the Big Ten. It uh, came out this week, last week, that the Big Ten wanted Cal and Stanford, but that Fox wasn't re- willing to give them more money to get Cal and Stanford. So it didn't work out. But, you know, the next time things reshuffle and and I'm just saying I'm, I'm saying I think it's 26. But sorry, go ahead. So with his here with 24, 24 teams, each conference has four divisions of six. I think we we talked about this before. I'm not a divisions guy. A divisions here. Um, yeah, I'm not. I want us to get away from divisions here, but let, let's see what he says here. Regular season, all teams play 12 games. All teams play 12 game regular season schedules. Okay. Three game three games are open for competing against non Big Ten or SEC schools in order to keep rivalries, get slash give money, etc. These games don't count towards your win loss in your division, but they do count towards your rating, which can help you get a wild card spot later. Oh, okay. Okay. So that that's no different than what we currently have. Five games, five games against your own division on a rotating home away schedule. Two games against two teams who finished in the same spot of your division in your own conference the previous year. And then two teams against two games against teams from other conference who finished in the same spot as you the previous year. This is based off of, as Spikes points out in the chat, this is based off of what the NFL does. Yes. Uh, he says here, this ensures competitive games every year and will get you some teams at or near the top that are different on some occasions. But you, you would still have to play the teams in your division in order to level the strength of schedule, as well as the rankings being able to, to give a team with a tougher schedule a wild card spot. Um, Any comments to that before we move on? <laughs> I would only do one or two games outside of the big two. I, you know, when he said here, two games against other conferences who finished the same spot, I, I think that should be just like, maybe just one kind of think of like how the used to be like the big 10 versus ACC tournament, something like yeah. that. Do, do something like that. I, I would like to, so if there are 12 games, I think I would like to see it as 10 conference games, one whatever game, just whatever, and one game that, as as you pointed out, is just sort of set up at random with the other conference. Again, as you said, kind of in the same way they did the you know, used to do the Big Ten ACC challenge in basketball. I I almost I almost would want to set it up. I almost want to set it up like it's baseball or the way baseball used to be, where there was no interleague play. Like you, you straight up just wouldn't play. You just straight up don't play the other league until you get to the championship game. That puts so much bragging rights on that game between the two conferences. 
I can't believe I'm looking to the MLB for inspiration because they typically do most things wrong. But I think there's something cool about just never playing the other league until everything's on the line. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Playoffs here. So all right. Playoff section here. He says, if you don't qualify for the playoffs, you're guaranteed one bowl game against the equally ranked opponent in the other conference. I, I don't agree with that, but because then you're getting back into meaningless bowl games where you have Vanderbilt versus Northwestern or something like that. Yeah. And there won't be enough bowl games to satiate the, but here's the other thing. If they're doing what I recommended doing well, and Spike says, or what if that was a uh, week zero bowl game the next year? Well, that's that's that one game. That's that one game against the other conference in the like the Big Ten versus SEC matchup week. If I I really like the I really like the idea of having a bowl game for the teams that don't make the playoffs. I really like the idea of the bowl game happening where they play the team from the other conference again because that's your only in in my scenario in which the two teams don't play each other. The two conferences don't play each other. You'd actually get to play against a team in another conference, which you straight up don't have the opportunity to do all year. A Big Ten team never plays the SEC team except in a postseason game. That brings a lot of interest to those bowl games, because if if you're Michigan State, you get to play Tennessee, and that's literally your only opportunity to ever play Tennessee because you're not allowed to schedule them. And neither of them are going to go to the national title game. It adds some interest because, again, it's your only opportunity to play an SEC team or a Big Ten team. It adds some interest. I don't agree, I don't agree but we'll, we'll, we'll move on. We'll, we'll agree to disagree. Fair. You win your division. So still so talking about playoffs here. You win your division. You make your conference playoff. To win the division... You need the best record of your 10 power two games. If there's a tie in the rankings, then the rankings come into play. If you're one of the next three, I, I don't like teams. In your I don't like that rankings even matter in this format. If you're one of the next three highest ranking teams in your conference, you make the playoffs. If you're if you are the top two division winners, you get buys in the second round. So it would be. A six seed versus three seed, which are divisional champs. Five seed versus four seed, which are both wild cards. I I I, I can't get I can't get on board with the divisions. That's just me. Yeah, winners are are reseeded to face one and two seed and continue until you have a SEC SEC champ and a Big Ten champ who face off for the national title. So I think with with that many teams, 24 or 26, I do think you need to have some sort of tournament, mini tournament or, 100%. or whatsoever. And, and I do there. like now. And I do like the now, idea now that for, the Big Ten has their own tournament and the SEC has their own tournament. And then at the end, the two chan- again, like the NFL with the AFC and the NFC, right? AFC has their own tournament. NFC has their own tournament. And then at the end, there's the Super Bowl. I think that's great. I think that's how the Big Ten and the SEC should do it once it is just those two. My only qualm with this is the emphasis on divisions, and I just I don't care about divisions. Yeah, so I mean, how many how many teams would you have in this in the um conference tournament then? Would it be I think six is too many? Because then then you're looking at 12 teams out of 24. Well, no, it'd be 12. It'd be six teams it's out of six 24. Out, six out of 24. So you're, you're or 26. looking at. Mm-hmm, yeah. So you're, you're, you're looking at. Uh, was that 16? 16, 16% of the teams make 
make it. I, I I think I think the I think it's four. I think it should be like four teams. The top four the top four teams. I me me not going with uh, divisions, but top four teams go at it against each other. What the, the NFL has the, the conference champion. The NFL has how many teams in their tournament now? Because it used to be 12, so now it's 14, right? Yeah, seven in each. Yeah, so 14. And that's out of 32 teams. So they have slightly more teams. Well, they, they have, no, they have significantly less teams. What the hell am, am I talking about? Because that's 32 for the entire league, not 26 plus 26. So they have significantly less teams. See, I'm bad at math when I have to do it with the recording on me. But I bet I got there, but I got there. So my point is, is that it's still it's, it's, way it's more still strict. Almost half. Yeah. That's so that's so like 14 out of 32. That's yeah, that's almost half. Almost half of the teams make the playoffs. Yeah, I, I, I wish the NFL had stayed with the 12 team playoff, but that's a different yep. conversation for a different podcast. Um, I, I don't I don't like the NFL move to 14. But I think if you were looking at 48 or 52 teams, depending upon if we're talking about 24 or 26 team conferences, I think 12 is 12 total, so six from each side is totally fair. Mm-hmm. I, I that's that's just my opinion. I, I I love the old NFL format. I love the old NFL format of having four teams play on the first weekend and two teams get a bye. That to me is the ideal football format. The NFL fucked it up. Yep. And I think each conference should do that. And then at the end, you have your Big Ten SEC championship game which is now the national title because those are the only two conferences that matter. That's how I would do it. So, yeah. So I, think, I agree um, with, I agree with but, everything Austin is saying about the playoffs. I agree with everything Austin is saying about the playoffs, except for the whole thing about divisions. That's just me. Screw divisions. Just take your best six teams. Oh, so you're saying six, not four. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I am saying six. I think the 12 team playoff and I'm counting both, both conferences. When I say 12, the 12 team playoff is the ideal playoff. The NFL fucked it up. They should have stayed at 12. Four teams play the first weekend Two the best two teams get a buy. That's the perfect, that is the perfect playoff format in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Big Ten and the SEC should each do that just the way the AFC and the NFC used to both do that. I, I just want I just want the NF the old NFL playoff model applied to the Big Ten and the SEC. Again, my only difference between what the NFL used to do and what Austin's proposing here is division champions. I don't care about divisions. I don't want divisions. It's just top six. Just your top, top six. six. Top six from your from your record, and then you can do your whole tiebreakers of, I don't know, we'll figure figure it out if um if ever goes down down that way. Um, points, um, yeah. What I, I think you can probably model off of what the NFL does with their tiebreakers. I think what do they do? Um, um, like, was it like? Point scored or point differential or something like that. Well, you have your overall record or your overall record, then your divisional record. Um, but like if we if we take out divisionals, though. Yeah, but that's how the that NFL out. does it. Well, in in that in that I, situation, I know, I know, I know. you would call it it'd be your conference record, then your overall record, because there are probably two games, although one of them is yeah. probably a gimme. Um, also, this is how you get the this is how you get Notre Dame to shut up and join, too. By literally yes. saying, do you want to be relevant or not? Which, by yes. the way, is one of the reasons why the SEC will be the conference that pushes against this, 
because they know for a fact as much as the as much as Notre Dame doesn't want to join the Big Ten. My God, they would never, ever join the SEC. They'd never join the SEC. So they know they're just handing Notre Dame to the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons why the SEC. That's what one of the reasons why the Big Ten is all gas on going towards the inevitable of two conferences, and the SEC is over there, like kind of pumping their brakes a little bit, is strictly because of Notre Dame. It, but it's inevitable. Two div- two conferences is inevitable. Notre Dame joining the Big Ten is inevitable. This is all inevitable. The only the only real questions in my mind are like, where does Florida State go? Where does North Carolina go? Those are the only real questions in my mind at this point. And also there's like some bubble teams. Do they make it or not? But they're bubble teams. Who cares? Like to me, it is inevitable. Notre Dame is going to go to the Big Ten. Clemson's going to go to the SEC. You can just go ahead and write all that down. It's going to happen. Yep, yep. All right, cool. All right. Um, I think those are it here. A lot of, a lot of great things here. Um, yeah, I, I, I like a lot of things that people have, at our Discord have posted in here of how to fix college football. I, th- I think most of these would make college football much better than it is right now but in the end it's it's going to be in the end it's going to be come down to two two conferences and then what's going to come from that and how 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 will a champion be crowned once those two conferences are finalized or or structured yeah and Again, the one thing I would, the the other thing I would, as far as Austin's plan here, which I almost entirely like, I don't like the divisions. And I think that the SEC and the Big Ten should not play each other. I think each conference probably gets one or two games just to maybe help preserve some rivals or maybe get a cupcake warm up game in there. You know, so 10 conference games, two out of conference games, but you're not allowed to play the other conference. No SEC versus the Big Ten. You're not allowed to play each other except in the postseason. I'm I'm adopting I'm adopting the old MLB rule of no interleague play. I think that would be fun. I think that's it here. I think I think that will end uh, today's episode. You got anything else, Jared? Well, I, Kyle, that's my line. <laughs> that that Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, a couple of quick things here. Uh, Ohio State finally wins one on the road. Oh my god! In East Lansing, in East Lansing of all places, for some Ohio State, well, one first time in four hundred and twenty days that Ohio State has won on the road. And also the first time that they've won in East Lansing since 2012. So wow. a couple of long time, long time things that have not happened that um that happened Sunday night here. So uh Dale's uh buzzer beater there to to put Ohio State in the um um win over Sparty here. It's such a such an odd game there, but hey, you take those wins. On the flip side, women's the women's um clinch a number one seed in in the Big Ten tourney. I think nice. they are, I think they're bound to do great things in the NCAA here. And as well, if we're going back to uh, football here, Ohio State. Uh, right before we hit the record button, Ohio State hires former Alabama director of personnel operations uh, Sam Petito as Ohio State's director of person player personnel. For those of you who don't know, that was Mark Pantone's uh old spot, but he has since become a quote general manager. Um what all of that specifically means about everybody's day-to-day operations, I don't know uh exactly. But that's 
you know, everyone's like, well, who used to be that? Well, it used to be Mark Pantone. Is Mark Pantone gone? No, he's just general manager now. Again, I, I, I don't have clarity on what all of that means specifically. By the way, Austin, uh, in response to my SEC and the Big Ten not playing each other, says takes away so much fun from the regular season if you do that. To me, the big, I want to leave something. What is happening? One of the things that was so great about college football was the insane emphasis on the regular season. And we are losing that. The 12 team playoff is us losing that. It it just is. And I'm not saying it's a good thing that one loss could ruin your season. I don't think that's good, but man, it made the season kind of fun in a, Mm -hmm. in a stand at the edge of a skyscraper sort of way. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's imminent death was fun. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, that's what it is. But I like the cushion. Yeah. The roller coasters are fun because they're scary, but I don't actually want to die, which is why the roller coaster also needs to be safe. Mm -hmm. But I but I think sort of keeping the conferences away from each other during the regular regular season does put a lot of emphasis in the postseason, which might make that a lot of fun. I don't know. It's it's all things we'll figure out or won't as as yeah. things happen. Uh, tonight's okay. ending music, That's- tonight's ending music uh, brought to you by heart attack, man. They're a Columbus based band. Uh, you can stick around and, and listen to heart attack, man. Um, so with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is heart attack, man. <laughs>